found yourself needing to write documentation and just staring at the blank page, not knowing how to get started? Yeah, me, me neither. Hmm. The first time I sat down to write official product documentation, I struggled. But I pushed through the discomfort, and with the help of some really high-quality reviewers, I published my first piece of official product documentation. Now, I still don't love writing documentation, but I have gotten better at it over time. So today I'm going to be sharing with you seven best practices for writing documentation. Let's jump right in. First up, read some of the docs. If you're adding on to an existing set of documentation, start out by reading it. If you can get through all of it in a reasonable amount of time, read all of it. If not, read the important pieces like the introduction, the getting started guide, and something similar to what you'll be writing. Look for patterns in how the documentation is structured and consider how you can follow that structure in your writing. Familiarize yourself with key terms and the level of detail provided as you'll want to match these aspects in your new documentation. In many cases, you'll want to aim for your documentation set to be so cohesive that it will seem like it was written by one person. If you find something confusing or that can be improved while you're reading, take a note or open a ticket. Don't get sidetracked into fixing everything right away. If you're writing a new set of documentation and you don't have the luxury of reading existing docs, do a light read of documentation for similar projects. Think about what you like and what you don't like, and this will give you inspiration as you start writing. So best practice number one, read some of the docs. Best practice number two, identify what needs to be documented. And I'm not talking about just that high level topic. I'm talking about the details. What concepts do your readers need to understand? Do you need to explain these concepts or link to other resources that explain them? What prerequisites will your readers need to complete before beginning? What steps will your readers need to take? What will the reader learn or accomplish after reading your documentation? And what versions of the software does the documentation apply to? If you're documenting how two pieces of technology work together, what versions are supporting the details? It's the details. If you're not already an expert on the details, dig in to learn them. Perhaps you do urge. Perhaps you try the steps yourself. Perhaps you ask an expert questions. Perhaps you do a combination of all three. Keep notes about things that confuse you or where you get stuck. Be sure to detail the steps of a first-time user because the experience may be different in subsequent tries. If you're already an expert on the topic, consider what you know that your readers will not. Walk through any session environment. It's so easy to forget that you previously installed something months ago when you tried it for the first time yourself. So, to Identify what needs to be documented. Best practice number three, learn about your reader. Now, if you're lucky, some already created detailed personas. If you're writing internal documentation for your team, you might be lucky enough to know your readers personally. Try to answer the following questions about your reader. What's your reader trying to accomplish? What did they already know about the topic? What concepts and terms will be new to them? How does your reader want to find the information that they need? So best practice number three, learn about your reader. Now, before I move on to best practice number four, I want you to pause and think about your favorite technology. Maybe it's a framework, maybe it's a library, maybe it's a programming language, or maybe it's a tool. You got something in mind? Now, Think about their docs. Have you read their entire set of documentation? Chances are good that you've not. So best practice number four, 
write so your docs are skimmable. People rarely read the entire set of documentation from start to finish. Instead, they're gonna jump around, find a page they think is gonna have the information they need, skim it, and starting first with the headers and then drilling into any sections that look relevant. So here are two pages of documentation that contain the exact same information. Do you prefer the page on the left or the page on the right? I'm gonna take a guess that you prefer the page on the right. Why? Well, the page on the right is formatted for skimmability. The first thing you might notice is that that page has headers that break up the sections. The note has color highlighting to separate it from the rest of the text. And the bulleted lists help break up long chunks of information into easy to digest phrases. So here are some tips for writing so that your docs are skimmable. Use descriptive headers that allow your reader to quickly determine if a section will provide the information they are looking for. Write in short paragraphs focused on a single idea. Long paragraphs are just harder for the reader to parse. Short paragraphs are also easier to translate to other languages. Use bulleted lists to share groups of information. And use numbered lists to share sequential or ordered information. Numbered lists are exceptionally helpful for steps in a tutorial. So in summary, write so your docs are skimmable. Best practice number five, read the style guide or select one. Have you ever wasted time debating with a teammate in a pull request about the formatting that should be used? It's painful, right? Just like a development team creates code formatting guidelines, your team can create a style guide for your documentation. A style guide is just a document that provides rules and guidelines for consistent writing. When you write documentation, you need to make a bunch of decisions, and sometimes the answer is not always clear, and it might just come down to preferences. So a style guide could cover topics like tone and formality level. Are you casual? Are you formal? Grammar and formatting guidelines. Most important to me, do you use the Oxford comma? I hope so. The ideal reading level. I've heard from several people, you may not wanna go above eighth grade reading level. Keep in mind, English may not be the first language of people who are reading your docs, so you wanna keep things easy to read. Inclusive language guidelines and words to avoid. You don't wanna cause anyone harm or distract them from the information that you're trying to convey. So use inclusive language. How to talk about important terms and actions. Maybe there are particular verbs you use to describe actions the reader or the technology is taking. And what use cases or themes you wanna use for examples. Perhaps you have a running theme throughout your docs like a pet shop example. If your team already has a style guide, take the time to familiarize yourself with it and reference it when you have questions. If your team does not yet have a style guide, you can start with a publicly available one like the Red Hat style guide. If you make a decision that differs from or enhances the style guide you've chosen, document that decision in a place like a team wiki or a file in your code repo. Now, full disclosure, I am a Grammarly employee, but I want to make you aware that there are tools like Grammarly that will provide inline suggestions based on your own style guide. It's like the difference between having code formatting rules in a wiki page and having a linter as part of your CICD process that enforces those code formatting guidelines. So best practice number five, read the style guide or select one. Moving right along, best practice number six, build code samples. A clear code sample is worth a thousand words. Developers commonly skim documentation looking for code samples. They're hoping that they can copy and paste code directly into their application and that the code just works. So here are some recommendations for building code samples. Write just enough code to demonstrate the concept that you're describing. 
ensure the code sample conforms to the best practices of the programming language being used, optimize for readability over code efficiency. Note any prerequisites that are needed in order for the code to run. For example, note any imports that should be at the top of the file, or if the reader needs to install a specific version of something. Note if the sample includes code that you do not recommend for production. So best practice number six, build code samples. Our final best practice today, review your work. It's almost certain that your first draft will have room for improvement. You might skip a key step, leaving your readers feeling confused or frustrated, or you might have grammar mistakes or wordy sentences that distract or confuse your readers. So get some feedback. Similar to code reviews, documentation reviews improve quality and spread knowledge among team members. Create a documentation review process that makes sense for your project. But no matter what, I strongly recommend that you do a self-review. Wait at least a day after you finish the first draft before doing your self-review so that you're more likely to catch mistakes. Read through your documentation from top to bottom to ensure that it makes sense. If you're writing a guide with steps, try the steps yourself in a fresh environment. Pretend like you're a new user. Use a tool to ensure that your writing is clear, polished, effective, and free of mistakes. And step through any checklist that your reviewers will use so that you're proactively catching anything before your reviewers do. This allows your reviewers to give you a higher quality review. Now for public documentation, I recommend three layers of reviews. So start out with a self-review. After that's complete, request a technical review. And after that's complete, request a copy review. Now I love a review checklist to keep reviews consistent and ensure that nothing major gets skipped. So here are the checklists that we use. I'm not gonna read through these now, but feel free to grab a screenshot and use them in your review process. So best practice number seven, review your work. All right, so let's recap the seven best practices for writing documentation. Read some of the docs. Identify what needs to be documented. Learn about your reader. Write so your docs are skimmable. Read the style guide or select one. Build code samples. And finally, review your work. I can't wait to read what you write. Enjoy.